we briefly mentioned a three terms, mm -hmm. and we did this previously. Now, one is confidentiality, then availability, and integrity. Confidentiality is all about keeping access to the information only to the intended audience. Integrity is about maintaining the sanctity of information. Availability is about authorized personnel accessing the data at appointed times. These three together are known as the CIA triad. CIA triad is a model promoted to define and practice policies related to information security. Yeah, and we're going to elaborate on each element of the triad, and we're going to start with the first one you mentioned, that's confidentiality. Confidentiality does two things. It ensures that the right people get the intended information, and it prevents sensitive information from reaching the wrong people. Mm -hmm. right? So data encryption is one of the most common means of ensuring confidentiality. Now you know that SSL TLS, a security protocol for communications over the internet, is being used in conjunction with a large number of internet protocols to ensure the security that we're talking mm -hmm. about. Rigorous use of user IDs with security passwords is a standard practice and in many places two-factor authentication is mandatory. So you would have observed that biometrics are becoming popular these days, mm -hmm. you know, people scanning their eyes, putting yeah. their fingers to things. Users are always advised to access data from secure places and avoid public sharing places to the minimum. That's correct. And integrity is about keeping the data accurate through its life, whether it is in the same computer or shared or transmitted over the network. Data must neither be changed during the transit nor lost. It is essential that data is transmitted securely and um, necess necessary steps put in place. Okay. Now, we must establish procedures to identify any changes to data unintentionally. The data could be changed without human intervention or intervention, rather, for example, by exploits, server crashes, accidents, etc. Backup are, uh, or backups are always maintained in a safe and secure place and made available on demand. Availability, whole different ballgame, right? It involves a, a comprehensive planning of hardware, software, facility, people, and connectivity, just to name a few. Mm -hmm. Now, there must be a redundancy mechanism in place to fail, fall back in case of failover. Now, this includes providing additional hardware, network bandwidth, facility, power backup, and, of course, taking measures to ensure a smooth transition to a failover site and back once the original site is restored. Correct. Now, we just talked about the CIA triad. Let me take you back to hacking and timelines. A timeline is often termed as a vulnerability timeline, risks and the window of exposure. Right, and on the timeline, we could see the discovery of a vulnerability, mm -hmm. the exploitation of it, uh, disclosure to others, and patches made available and installation of those patches. Now, from discovery all the way to disclosure, it is a black hat who uses the vulnerability. So from the time it is disclosed till the patch is available, normally gray hats use it. From the time the patch is available to installation of the patch, white hats use the vulnerability. So once the patch is installed, you are safe. There's a lot of hats there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> keeping up on that. So we're going to explain what these white, gray, and black hats are about, starting with, well, let's just say the white one first. Okay, let's okay. do that. Ethical hackers fall into the white hats category. They get permission from the data owner before any hacking and use their hacking skills for defensive purposes only. Right. They use their knowledge and skills to locate weaknesses and implement countermeasures and for the defense purposes and preventive uh, or preventing losses. Then what are the bad hats? Black hats are malicious hackers. Black hats, otherwise known as risks, try to hack systems with malicious intent. Right, so you got the good and the bad. Now you're going to get what we call the gray. The third category is gray hats. Gray hats fall in between the white and the black hats. They are curious to know and use the tools and may not really be dangerous, uh, but they're not white hats, and they can aid the company in informing them about any vulnerabilities they have found. That's correct. Yeah. And we have just talked about the vulnerability timeline and types of hats. We'll talk briefly about types of threats. They are classified into three categories, natural threats, 
technological threats and human threats. What is a natural threat? It could be a flood causing areas to be waterlogged or a hurricane or a tornado causing a lot of damage. Now, often these natural threats impact the uh, availability of the systems. Now we are more interested in technology threats. Right, and they're less windy too. Yes. So let's talk about technology threats. Mm -hmm. uh, they could be caused by malware, zero-day attacks, exploits, or web attacks. We introduced zero-day attacks a moment ago and exploits to you, uh, but what is malware? Well, here it is. Any type of program that is created with the intent to cause damage or steal data or abuse computer system resources. That's what we call malware. Mm -hmm. Now, these could be programs and files that are created to do harm. Malware includes computer viruses, worms, and Trojan horses. Any website may be compromised by cyber criminals and used to attack your data. So here are five of the most common attack methods that continue to be the scourge of many websites. SQL injection, cross-site scripting, cross-site request forgering, using components with known vulnerabilities, and what we call man in the middle. Now, we're going to talk about these attack methods in subsequent chapters throughout this whole program. Correct. Human threats are insiders who have authorization to access systems and hackers who use the exploits to attack. Social engineering is being used heavily these days to get the confidential information by tricking victims. Have you ever received any suspicious calls or emails asking for your bank account number, password, PIN, and any other information? I mean, the list of threats go on. And let's move on.